today's class. Today's class is going to be, we're going to major on now. Remember last week we were just trying to give an overview of what data mining warehousing would look like or what it is all about. But today I want to narrow down into data mining and then next week I'll narrow down to data warehousing. Then from there now we will go into some, a bit of computations uh, on a few algorithms to just introduce us to the concepts that we need to learn. Um, then I will move from there to see how we can apply some of those concepts in our real world um, um, so that we are able to provide perspective in how this class is relevant to us um, uh, and even in our career. So today, um, majorly we're going to look at the tasks in data mining, data mining process, classification of data mining systems, and major issues in data mining. And on major issues, I would want this to be covered. Yes, it's there in our lecture, but I want us to cover it in our discussion forum. So if you check the discussion forum, it's uh, asking questions around what are the major issues. And I would want you not just to focus on what may be covered in the lecture, um, but uh, just make sure that you are able to engage in a constructive, you know, thinking process on how, what are the major issues that we are dealing with today as far as even just big data is concerned. Uh, we are having quite a lot of issues. Um, just recently, uh, issues were raised around um, Zoom as a platform and uh, people talking a lot about uh, security issues that are there and how, you know, how um, data can easily be compromised, data about the users can easily be compromised. So what are the major issues, even in your circle? Of, of inference or where you work or where you are at, what are the major issues that you have been able to raise that, um, you know, in one way or the other could inform our discussion around data mining processes that we have today, but also around, um, around um, the insecurities that are there in the systems that we are working with. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now let me recall what we said. Remember, we say that data mining is a non-trivial non process of extraction of hidden and previously unknown and potentially useful information from large databases. That's something that we were defining last week. And uh, this is a definition that was coming from Gopalan, a book that um, I said I have used before. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so remember what we are saying is one non-trivial process of extraction of hidden and previously unknown and potentially useful information. And um, so that in itself speaks a lot as far as or in, in reference to what we desire to cover even today, um, that what is that process? How does it look like? Where is this useful hidden information coming from? Um, which are these large databases? Um, how does an engine, a data mining engine, how would it look like? Those are issues that we may need to even uh, put at the back of our minds as we discuss. And so, like I said, we just looking at various concepts here and uh, tasks is one of them. And I want to start with that. Um, and uh, just make sure that we go together. So six very, very uh, key tasks that are associated with data mining. Um, so mm -hmm. one, remember, if we are extracting data, if we are extracting data, we are extracting that data from multiple sources. And that's something that we mentioned uh, last time, that we may have a transactional database that is currently running, but also that we may have, um, you know, um, a data warehouse, we may have um, a social media platform somewhere and we are pulling that data. Uh, I remember last week we had a heated debate on CRM. We may have a CRM that is helping us to capture data from customers and all those are multiple sources that we are having. 
we may have even um you know a customer care support where people do survey after they have been supported and we have seen that in many of the platforms that we use today and so all those multiple sources come and bring data here and you can almost guess that we may have anomalies um, in that data we may have deviation on how different data types are recorded or are named in various data um, sources that we have and uh, i know we will look at data types um, in data mining as well but uh and, and it's something i would want you to look at in the book i i mentioned i have posted it on our dashboard there is a whole topic on data types which is a very interesting concept that you may want to read on that book is available here um i posted um, an e-copy of data mining book which you can be able to find in our dashboard the first lecture but what i'm saying is um we may want also to just look at that what are the various data types that we have and uh, um how does that even inform our data mining process having various data types within um within uh within uh within the mo the multiple sources where we are getting data from and so what essentially we are saying here is that um is that um, anomaly detection would be one of the tasks that we want to accomplish and this is basically identification of usual of unusual sorry data records that might be interesting or data errors that uh, require uh, further investigation and i remember last week i mentioned a little bit about outlier and um, we usually talk about um, outlier analysis as one of key key uh, concepts in data mining and so um we just want to know this data is coming and i, I gave an example last time of a student unique identifier in 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 ZTEC, we may be calling that a registration number. In another university, it may be an admission number. In another university, it may be a student number. And if we pull data from all those sources, calling a, a student number differently, you may actually find that the data that comes in has some anomalies. But also, um, you know, the the concepts of um, data errors that we may experience we may have data errors data entry errors which are very common to any human being and so those are concepts or those are tasks that are very key when we are looking at um at, at data mining process we need to be able to detect those anomalies that exist and um I would want us to, as we engage and move forward, um, remember this is not, um, you know, a monologue engagement. I would want you even to engage and look, what are those platforms that exist online right now that are trying to uh, be able to address the issue of anomalies, uh, you know, outliers. Today we have platforms that are able, you know, early alone we were saying, and those who have done research know that, that we actually do away with any one of those outliers but today there are uh, you know new algorithms new systems that are trying to um, be able to incorporate outliers without necessarily having to cause um should i call it distortion or just deviation in how we expect the normal um uh, behavior of the data to be to look like and so that's also a very um, interesting area that you may want to to consider and look at but what we are saying anomaly detection is very very important the other thing is um association uh, rule learning and um we will look at association rule mining uh after this uh, the next topic um we will be looking at association rule mining and this is basically we are trying to search relationships that are that exist between various variables yeah and um <clears throat> i must say this is a very interesting area because the more the stronger the association that exists between various va variables then that in one way may inform you 
to make a particular decision yeah so a good example would be a supermarket might gather data on customer purchasing habits um this is something we were discussing last week as well so using association rule learning or mining the supermarket can determine determine which products are frequently bought together and use that information for marketing purposes or even how you arrange that supermarket so a concept that we call market basket analysis right there um <clears throat> so the issue of um the task of associating different variables okay um the task of associating different variables is also a key task as far as um data mining process is concerned so we want to be able to get this variable get another one get another one bring them here and just try to associate them um okay joyce can you hear me if you can please type in i see you're saying you are not able to get the audio if you are hearing me now please type in so that i know um okay others i think are okay um <clears throat> okay just let me just continue so what we are saying here is um and and please pay attention because um anytime i have a question i sample from those that are present right now i sample just to get to know that you are still here uh so please try and uh pay attention to what we are saying but uh yes association rule mining um is a concept that we'll try to address as we continue but also it's a concept that we will also seek to dive deeper look at a few algorithm you know april algorithm fp growth algorithm and many other that even just right from when this concept was born if i may say yeah those are some of the algorithms that came uh, about and so if we were to look at this from a conceptual point of view then i think uh, it's good to dig into history before we come to where we are right now okay clustering is another thing so the, and this is a task of discovering groups and structures of data that are in some way or another similar okay so uh we can be able to try and get uh I don't know if there's anyone here who remembers um and uh this is these are some of the things that probably we may not want to remember but I don't know if any one of us here um those who are keen on math I'm talking to scientists so you should be keen on math um anyone who remembers kind of best fit yeah we are looking that in uh, we are looking at that in physics a lot i think physics and uh, a bit of some topics in mathematics to be honest i can't remember quite well if you remember you can uh, refresh our mind but uh, yeah line of guess fit. now now uh please when you you get in here uh mute your mic so that you don't interrupt us um so having your mic on is just like having um, to shout when we are in class and you are right there at the back and you're just shouting. Um, it doesn't work very well. Okay, so, um, so clustering is whereby you can be able to see a particular behavior in given data. So you have various data sets that are coming uh from various multiple sources and there is a particular behavior that is forming that is so um should i say so similar with another data set another data set another data set and so they form sort of a cluster that is having behavior throughout and so we should be very keen uh, this is one of the tasks that we need to uh you know elaborate further and we look at a few clustering algorithms um in there but just how can we be able to pick data from multiple sources and once we have that data in here 
try as much as possible to cluster that data um, in 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 um, you know in groups of uh, a similar behavior that is happening in the data clusters or data sets that we have. And so those clusters are what would inform us on you know how the trend looks like, for example, or how a particular um, uh, or how a particular um, data is behaving, and that can, in one way or the other, inform the next move for us. So if we were, um, I'm just trying to look for a practical example. This may not be uh, some of those examples that we like hearing, especially uh, <clears throat> right now we have a, a major, major, challenges that are happening in the in the ruling party um, and uh, when we are having elections uh, in this country particularly um, <clears throat> we we usually have a particular behavior yeah particular behavior that we expect cluster uh, you know a cluster of the support that is coming for a particular party particular individual uh, there is a stronghold, and so we would expect a cluster around the stronghold of a particular uh, uh, politician. Uh, so if you are talking of Lakeside, there is a particular uh, uh, person who would expect that, you know, data is going to behave in a particular way. If you are talking of Central, there is all that, and I am not, um, <laughs> I don't want to continue from there because I may end up losing some of us here. But uh, what I mean is just that particular trend that we expect in data is also a key task that we would want to explore. And that's why I'm saying some of these are actually major topics that we would want to look at in our engagement here, just major topics on uh, how can we establish clusters? How can we establish cluster sets or data sets, data, um, data sets around that behave in a particular way what are some of those algorithms that we can use um <clears throat> the other three tasks that we can talk about is classification so we have been able to associate we have been able to cluster then how can we classify so say this data because it's happening it's it's behaving in this particular way and it's so similar to each and every um you know each and every data around this is behaving this way so we can classify this data and say this data belongs to this particular classification and that now helps us to be able to generalize come up with a structure that we can be able to apply in the new data that comes in so whenever new data comes in then we know where to channel that data because we have already formed a classification of that particular data other concepts that will be um key and i'm introducing this because i would want also for you to go ahead and check on them as well <clears throat> So other ones would be um, regression, so attempts to find a function which models the data with the least error, okay? And then, uh, so which is that function or which is that algorithm that we can be able to use to model the data that we are having with very minimal, or let me say what we call in data mining, the highest confidence level. Yeah, the highest confidence level. Uh, then also summarization, and this is providing more um, compact representation of the data set, including visualization and report generation. So once we are done, then, and this summarization is actually what now the typical layman user of the system would be interested in. They are not interested on which algorithm you use, how you used, uh, you know, what are the mathematical functions in there? They may not be interested in that. At the very end, they are actually inter in interested to see, uh, okay, so what is the output? What are we visualizing? What are some of the red alerts that we have in the data that we have? 
Um, yeah, and I, I give an example last last week of uh, just an interesting way that uh, um, uh, you know our CS represented uh, the report through just visualization of how how does it look like? How would it have been if we did things in a different way? This is where we expected to be, but this is where we are. And that helps in just knowing, are we on the right foot or not? And that's also very important. So summarization is actually very key for a decision maker. They would not be interested a lot in many other, they would just be interested in summarization. Of course, they may want to dig deeper into what is um, the process. How does the process look like? And what was the input? What are the processes? But mostly they venture on or they focus on um, the output for decision making process. Um, so summarization is also a key task as far as um, data mining is concerned. Otherwise, if we don't have summarization, then we will have we will have done a lot of work, but at the very end, we will realize that data, that work was not used proactively to make a decision that could edify you know a company or an organization um so data mining process and um so we need to just get a bit of understanding of what that process would look like and i think um uh, I'll go through this. Uh, so let me just show you this diagram first. I think I should just bring it up here. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so, and this is just to help us see the bigger perspective of what the process would be would be um because probably you might leave uh ZTEC in a few few days and uh you may be engaged in i see this happening a lot with um i don't know if there's, there's anyone who has participated in a research process uh but i've seen this with the uh, university of nairobi for example they have an arm of research called um UNES, uh, University of Nairobi Enterprises and Services. Um, and they do a lot of research. In fact, they are um, one of the body that received, receives direct procurement from the government as far as uh, research, survey, data collection is concerned. Um, yeah, and, and how would that process look like? So stating the problem, getting to know what exactly is a problem and we'll go each of these step by step, collecting the data, okay, uh, performing some pre-processing. We'll talk, talk about pre-processing as we continue, but also estimating the model um, and interpreting the model, but also drawing the conclusion. So let me just go through this very fast and uh, we'll see how to end this. So gathering uh, or rather stating the problem to be able to help you formulate the hypothesis. Either you want to, uh, to prove the hypothesis wrong or right, that is up to you, uh, but you need to formulate the hypothesis. Get to know what exactly are you trying to prove? What exactly are you trying to deduce out of the data? Because up until when you have that, then you may not even have um, the understanding of what data are you looking for, um, who are the people that you want to get that data for, who are the relevant people to engage, who are the stakeholders that are interested in the data that you're looking for. You may not be able to understand that very well unless you actually are able to formulate the hypothesis, but also know what the problem is. So in a, from a business perspective, this could be, for example, um, yeah, we are asking ourselves hard questions on why are we seeing, um, you know, new subscriptions coming in from a particular region, yeah? So we, we formulate an, a, a hypothesis, we state the problem, 
and the problem may not be there is a you know there is a negative issue the problem may be just we want to clarify what are we looking at um, or what is is it that is pushing us to do this um let me pick a few people just to confirm we are here brian odoyo are you there just type yes prop abel are you there just type yes um who else um Iprop, are you there felix are you there if you are there just type yes i'm just sampling a few uh, <laughs> we are there please type yes keep proper are you there I haven't seen your response okay um who else uh, Wajohi, Wajohi, Oroiro, are you there? Okay. Puo Hamisa, are you there? Okay, Wajohi, you're there. Puo, you're there. Okay. Just to, to confirm that I'm not alone here, it's possible for you to be left with screen savers. I know that. Um, it happens a lot. So just to confirm. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so the, the, just getting to formulate the hypothesis, the problem, but also collecting the data. So the concerns, this is concerned with generation and gathering of the data. And in general, there are two distinct possibilities. So first is when the data generation process is under the control of the expert who is a modeler. But the other possibility is when the expert cannot influence the data generation process and so it's more of an observational approach um, so we can have that but essentially at the end of the day this may also the model that you use or um, um, the, the data collection process that you use may actually be just um, informed by what is the problem that you are trying to address in here and that's also very very important um, Okay, Kiprop, I was still looking for you. I'm glad you're here. I hope it wasn't like someone called you to awake you. I hope you are <laughs> following. Okay. Um, so let me move on. Um, Pre-processing, data pre-processing is an, another key thing. And um, I don't know if I had covered that in this. Yes, I am, I'm going to just talk about that in a short while uh, on data pre-processing because that is a key thing. And that is a huge determinant as far as the results of the data mining process are concerned. The results that you get may have a lot of anomalies if pre-processing of the data was not done well. And so anyway, I will cover that a bit. Um, but yes, just things to do with outlier detection and removal or adjustment that you need to make uh, on the outliers that exist, scaling and coding, uh, you know, selecting various features that you want to have um, are important. Um, then number four is also uh, estimating the model. So selecting and implementing an appropriate data mining technique that you can be able to use now to be able to draw conclusions from the data that you have. And that's what we said in our definition that we desire at the end of the day, we are able to draw conclusions from the data that we are reusing. Uh, so this process may not be as straightforward as we think. Yeah, it may be quite a lot of, you may have to employ a lot of models here and there. Some of the data, of course, um, it may be, um, some of the data may be very obvious. Whatever conclusions you want to draw, you, you may be able to bring that very fast. 
Um, Paul or Kate, uh, someone is telling you, please mute your mic. And uh, uh, the class is complaining. So it's not me alone. <laughs> the class is complaining. Please mute your mic so that they are able to hear what is happening. Um, yes, otherwise they may come after you. <laughs> So uh, the process is may not be very straightforward. And we look at some of those things. For example, the process of the model, you know, the data mining engine may involve uh, one, how do we extract the data? Two, how do we associate the data? Three, how do we cluster the data? Four, how do we classify the data? How, what are the regression algorithms we use? It may be such a complex model. Um, but it just depends on the, the problem, the problem you are handling up there. That may actually be the one that informs uh, the, the data model or the, the model that you're using in, in the mining process. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, then we, we talk about now, uh, you know, let's draw conclusions. Let's, let's know what are we seeing? What is this informing us? Uh, you know, and some of those things may be, this data is telling us there is a problem, yeah? And I have seen, I have seen some um, companies, I know, we know here, and you can maybe raise um, examples. Let me just speak, any one of us here. Do you have an example of um, a company that you know very well, they were doing very well like 10 years ago. They were the, the, the who is who in the market. And today, they have been faced out. Or in one way or the other, their market share has been taken either by disruptive technologies. Uh, okay, they are coming thick and fast. Uh, either by disruptive technologies or it's just because they ignored you know, I'm seeing those examples and you you have your reasons for that. I don't want to incline myself to any one of them, but it's probably they also ignored the technology, the advancement that are coming in. Um, and today they are no longer the who is who in the market, yeah? Um, some of us here, when you are growing up, um, a company called Kodak, yeah, was such a huge company in this country. Like they were the who is who in the you know in in this country. Because if you needed memories kept, or if you needed to keep memories, then you needed to get someone to take some photos and 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 have them um whatever. Yeah, and so <laughs> so. There is quite a lot, and I'm seeing so many uh, examples we have, and it's good that we have all those examples. Um, but the, the, the question here is, and this is a question we may need to ask ourselves here. Um, even in the spaces where we are, some of you here have uh, companies, um, or you are running your own startup. Are you analyzing the market? Are you clear on how the market looks like? Wow, okay, okay. <laughs> Very many examples. Yeah. Are you are you are you alive to the fact that technology is disrupting the market? Uh recently I have I was having a conversation. I don't know if I shared that in this class, but recently I was having a conversation with some people and I was telling them, What if is it true for me to say that my career is at at stake yeah and the reason why i was telling them this is because i have in this season i have just been online and i've realized so many 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 companies corporates education you know learning institutions that have offered courses for free so i was wondering why do i need to be here in the first place if i mean i checked one that really amazed me was harvard the best university in the world offering more than I think I, I saw 60 something courses that you can take. You are taught by a lecturer from Harvard um, absolutely for free. Yeah. And I was amazed, like, 
So if all this is being offered for free, do, will we have this um, learning that we are having here and will I be relevant in a few years? And I'm not scared about that, but I'm just asking myself, how can I remain relevant in the space where I am in? Just has, asking myself those hard questions. But yes, if we are in a place where we are receiving a lot of data, and we are not analyzing that data to point us to how the future looks like, in this day and age where technology is the driver of the economy, I can bet with you that any company that is not keen on this, it's going to be phased out by all means. Even if you think you are a monopoly in any organization, I was, I was reading, I don't know if I have that book with me here, I would have shown you, but, but I'm, I'm reading a book called Zero to One. Yes, Zero to One by, by Peter, uh, I think he's the founder of PayPal. And it's a very interesting analysis, just notes around startups, how startups start and they, they end, how they, be, they grow. Yeah, and he has been able to put cases there. It's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting book you may want to read. Um, if, um, if, if, especially if you are interested in, in just um, in business. But I, I'm just asking that big question on, if we are not able to draw conclusions from where we are at right now and how the future looks like, my friends, there are you know high possibilities that the companies we are in are not going to be relevant in the future there are those high possibilities okay so um it's okay you can continue with your discussions there let me continue with what i need to do <laughs> uh data free processing techniques um so here i'm talking of what are some of those pre process Pre-process, you can guess what that means, that before we process data, we need to do some few things here that can make sure that the data we are dealing with is the right data. So good example is cleaning of data. And cleaning of data would mean, um, that would tell you that, it's... now, Paul, I may, I don't know how to do to deal with you. Let me see how to deal with it. Um, I am just trying to be very, very gracious not to send you away. Um, I don't know if I can demote you. What do you do with Paul Okech? Paul, what do you do with you? Now, the next time your mic is making noise, I will actually, <laughs> uh, Brian, is it that you're joining now? But the next time your, your, your yeah, mic no. is making noise, I will but make you the presenter. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The next time your mic is on, I'll make you the presenter. <laughs> Okay, uh, data pre-processing techniques. Uh, so cleaning, uh, data cleaning techniques, integration. Remember, we talked of data coming from multiple sources, transformation of data, but also reduction into a data that can fit in the model that we have created. Um, yeah, so data cleaning it's very important uh let me just mention that i don't know if i have it in my notes um let me just be clear if i have that here for oh, yes i mean i think i'm i'm missing that but you can check in all the other notes um but what basically are we saying as far as data cleaning is concerned you would almost guess that whichever data you get it will come with some noise we talk of noise noise within the data okay it will come with some noise within the data and that noise if it's not dealt with we may actually end up having 
negative, you know, wrong results all together. I give an example of, uh, you know, take a, a case in point of Huduma data, and someone was asked, how many years, how, how old are you? Yeah, and they said 30. And then when someone was entering into the system, they wrote 300, yeah? If we were to do the average age for the data that we collected, and we have 300 within that, you can be sure the average is going to be something different altogether, yeah? And that can affect a lot on how the data looks like um, at the end of the day. So very important is to note that um, is to note that um, data cleaning is important to help us in removing anomalies. You know, detecting and removing different anomalies. But also now, once we remove those, we integrate the data by just looking, for example, what are the data types we are using? How can we integrate this data type with this one so that they are able to? Uh, because they represent the same the same variable, um, you know, and just be able to bring that out all together. But also transform the data, okay? Transform the data, and um, to go to that, what that means. So we've talked about integration. We are getting data sources, various data sources. We wrap that data, and we are able to integrate it into just one. Um, those are some of the issues around integration. Um, some of the things are redundancies. We may have uh, various attributes named differently, and that can cause redundancies. Uh, schema integration and object matching could be an issue. Detection and resolution of data values and the conflicts that exist. Um, yeah, then also data transformation whereby we are able to transform data on, con, or consolidate that data into forms appropriate for mining, okay? So transform is just consolidating that data into forms that are appropriate. That could involve things like smoothing the data. Um, and this works to remove the noise within the data and get the data in a way that can fit the model that we are talking about. Aggregation of data is another thing and um, we could have various models being used there. Then uh, transformation uh, also would mean generalization of the data. Normalization, we have talked about normalization in databases, I believe so. I don't think we can talk of database design without normalization. Um, so I expect that you have covered that somewhere so that we are able to remove some of the redundancies that would come with that data but also attribute construction. This would be, we have registration number on one end and student number on one end. We match those two and we call them the, the admission number, for example, or we call them unique identifier. And uh, those could be some of the tasks that are involved in transformation. Um, reduction, which is the techniques that can be applied to obtain a reduced representation of the data set that is much smaller in volume, yet closely maintains the integrity of the original data. Uh, those who have done research, they know, um, even if you are doing sampling, and uh, even if you are talking of, you know, we talk about a sample that is representative, if you know that, yeah? that if you are doing research, you talk of a representative sample. So you can talk of 6,000 students in ZTEC University and your sample population is 50 students. It's not representative, yeah? And so even if we were to reduce data, we want to make sure that the data that we have still maintains the integrity, but also it's representative enough to be able to help us draw the conclusions that we want to draw. Um, yeah, so data reduction, uh, these are things that I would want you to also look at some of the strategies you can use in data reduction. This could be uh, data cube aggregation, where aggregation operations are applied to the data into um, to the data in the construction of a data cube. 
and the data cube may be sort of like clustering the data yeah attribute subset uh, reduction uh dimensionality reduction and also uh numerosity reduction those are some of the techniques that we can use and uh you can dig deeper in that also i won't go through um yes i i can see my hour is coming to an end so I won't go through the classification of data mining because this is quite obvious. You can be able to go through this. It's also available on the prose form uh, version of these notes. So you can be able to go through this even in your discussion uh, and just look at various classification. But also the discussion that we want to have today is around the major issues in data mining and this i i had sampled this but i thought this is more could be more relevant if we share what we think in our spaces where we are working where we have been attached before uh you know in our kenyan economy in our institution what are the major issues that we may want to um consider as far as data mining is concerned um that could be you are concerned on how we deal with particular data and you don't want um you are proposing something so very constructive and um those who are not there before i can see today we are 66 students but those who are not there before i say mm -hmm. that discussion forums are important for evaluation they will form part of evaluation in this class and so in the on the dashboard there is a, a the third discussion forum which is under this lecture lecture three and you will be able to see um the question and the question basically is for you to try and bring out and let me just read that question right now um just one minute so that i get back there and just read the question the question is uh, on um <clears throat> on um on post on two major issues that could have a positive or negative impact to data mining process now i would want you to uh tie that with um a real case scenario yeah if you could give us a particular real case scenario of a data mining process that can happen in a real environment and then help us to um let me just tell this person i'll call you later i'll be right back um so um so what i was i was saying is tie the the major issues um either positive or negative on data mining process with a real environment so you may talk of social media a platform you know you may talk of where you work you may talk of the government of kenya you may talk of the ministry of, of, of health right now what are the major issues that can arise in the data mining process in that space and then posts and make sure that you also reply to at least three other posts that have been made by your classmates. Um, and by reply, what I mean is provide constructive feedback to your, your fellow students. So it's not like, uh, you know, uh, don't downplay someone's opinion, Tafadali, yeah? Don't downplay someone someone's opinion. Let me come again. Um, for the for the for the sake of newton um so what i'm saying is on the discussion forum for today <clears throat> and uh, whatever i said is something that is there in our um um okay uh sorry someone is just looking for me here but um what i was saying is um whatever i'm talking about is there in our lecture three of this class let me actually rename this to lecture three so that you know what i'm referring to um the lecture three of this class whatever i'm talking about it's available there so you can be able to get it there um uh, and, and it's basically 
today's class, we are looking at fundamentals of data mining. So post two major issues that could have a positive or a negative impact on data mining process. And what I said is tie that whatever you think is a major issue, tie that with a real, real, real environment. So for example, we are talking of, um, you know, which are those platforms? We are talking of Zoom. This is the most trending one right now on uh, some of the vulnerabilities that exist. And there was an analysis that was done by Safaricom on the same, which I, I found interesting. I thought they are considering that business, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> anyway. But uh, just, um, you know, try to get a real environment that you know and, and tie the issues that you are talking about. So if it's the issue of um, things to do with security of data, which environment would you tie that with? It may be security of data as far as Kenya National Bureau of Statistics is concerned, or as far as the government is concerned, or as far as uh, ZTEC University is concerned. What are the major issues and which environment or which industry are you tying that to? So give a short explanation there of two major issues, but also ensure that you um, you reply to what other people have posted, at least three other classmates, what they have posted, reply to them and, and, and give positive, let me not say positive, but constructive feedback, yeah? So um, it's not downplaying someone, but it's just trying to help them think in a different way altogether, yeah? Or think in a particular way or point them to a particular truth you know about what they are talking about. And that would be our discussion. Let me know if there is any question for today's class. Um, my uh, one hour that I had intended is, is, is now over. I started at um, 25 minutes to, uh, to three. So, I am here for any question. If someone has a question for me to address that. Um, any question? Yes, if you want to use your mic, please uh, unmute yourself and use the mic, no problem. Uh, this is open for you either to type in or use your mic, no problem. So Job, you can go ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this. Um, there's some clarification I wanted to get on uh, the task in data mining. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about Come again. Clustering and the explanation is almost the same. How 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 different? Clustering and what? I think I lost you. Uh, clustering and. I am losing you, uh, Rugendo. Okay, I'm seeing your questions. I'll be addressing them, but I wanted to be clear on what uh, Job is asking. Come again. Uh, I uh, what I'm asking is uh, how how different is uh, clustering from classification because I'm not uh, getting it quite clear from the explanation that you have given on the task okay, okay. in data mining. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, let's, let's try and get an example 
Let me try and uh, put this in perspective. That's a good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, but let me try to put this into perspective. Um, <clears throat> it is possible to have clusters classified. Okay. It is possible to have clusters classified. So you can have this group of data set. You can have actually data sets that are classified into one, yeah? But it is almost impossible to have classifications that are clustered, yeah? So we, we are talking of, we can be able to classify, like we can say, um, we get data from all the students in ZTEC University, and then we cluster that data into, um, students uh which is the best example students who um <clears throat> who um have had smooth um what do we call this uh transition like uh they have been able to progress smoothly yeah from one semester to the other so we cluster them into one group but now if we were to classify, then we will name that cluster into a particular, give it a name that this, uh, or rather we may say, so this is the cluster of people who have had issues with progression. Then we dig deeper into what is the reason, yeah? So the classification will be people who have issue in progression, but the, um, the clusters, will be this cluster has an issue with progression because of school fees. This other one has an issue because of failing. This other one, so that could be the biggest difference here as far as uh, clusters and clustering and classification is concerned. So we are able to look at it from, uh, you know, classification is that generic form, but within classification, it's possible to have various clusters that exist i um i would want to know if that is making sense to you um job um let me know if that makes sense to you i'm seeing your typing just go ahead <clears throat> okay okay thank you um let me sample other questions uh kindly repeat the classification of data mining what i said is there are various classifications that i've provided here and um, uh, what I was saying is basically this is uh, just uh, more or less straightforward. So it's possible to have a data mining engine based on the database technology that you are using. So if you are using a relational database, for example, and I want to maybe sample a few here so that you understand. If you are using a, a relational database, you can develop a database, a data mining engine because the database that you are using, either it's a transactional database or it's a, a data warehouse is relational, okay? And so that informs the classification. You can use, um, you, can, um, uh, you can be able to classify data mining engine based on machine learning, yeah? So if there is, an element of artificial intelligence in the data mining engine that you're using, then those data mining engine can be classified in one particular classification. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so maybe what you can do is um, please go through the, um, the notes, both what I have in the lecture in the PowerPoint presentation, but also what I posted on um, on our on our dashboard. And in case you have any question, um, oh. let's be open to raise either in the discussion forum or also in the next class um, as we continue. But that's what I meant by classification: that we can classify different data mining engine um, based on is it the technology that you're using is it machine learning is it the database that you're using 
Is it how you want to visualize data that can also um, dictate the engine that you want to develop for mining of that data? Okay, and that is also very important. The other thing is, um, yes, Robert, I can see your question. Please, Mualim, clarify the purpose of data mining. Uh, probably you may not have been here last time uh, because we talked about this, and I think class we were in agreement um one of the things that i said is that uh this class is practical yeah and uh one one person was very quick to ask me why are we saying this class is practical um are we going to be having some practical sessions here and i said the reason why i'm saying it's practical is because all that we are learning here is something so relevant in the market in the industry where we are at so uh my my answer to this question robert would be that um even as we continue for example we'll talk about association rule mining and our key key analysis will be on market basket analysis um which is a real real example that is being used even in in um in retail shops today so we'll be able to see why data mining is important but also think about it. Today we are talking about big data. Yeah, it's it's an interesting area there. I'm I'm learning just um uh, yeah just learning a lot about data mining in this season. But uh, we are talking about big data. That wherever we are, even today by you logging in here, I can mine a lot of data about you. Yeah, including the back. The, the background noise I hear behind, yeah, that's still data, yeah. Uh, by listening and transcribing this video, I can learn a lot about who you are, yeah. Um, but I can even learn a lot about behavior of a customer from the data I'm getting. So the reason why data mining would be important is we just don't want to, to get data and not make use of that data, yeah. But we want every time we have data, we are able to transform that data into a way that it can make help us to make a strategic decision for the organization. So we are able to see, um, you know, the examples that we give of the many organizations that have gone down. Eh? If they were very strategic in how they handle the data that exists in the market segment where they operate in, I am sure they would still be up and running. Yeah. And this is amazing. Uh, read the case of Google and know why they exist. Yeah, why they are having 92.5 market share in search engine. That's where they are globally. Yeah, they do a lot of data analysis. So, um, so that's what I can answer your question. That's how I can answer your question. Sorry, uh, Robert. But this is very important, even for you as. I mean, you guys will rise up into managerial positions and you may not want to make decisions based on um, feeling, you know, or, you know, some, some predictions or some assumptions, but you want facts on the table before you make some uh, informed decisions. Um, so someone, Jamila, is, is saying, I don't think we have the, that specific PDF uh, you are using, uh, data mining concepts. The one, the one I'm presenting, if that's what you are asking, it's not yet uploaded, um, and I'm uploading it just right away. But the notes I'm using here are in, um, they are uploaded in prose form. But I don't have any issue with uploading um, even this one. I will upload it just right away after this. Good questions right there. Um, OK, uh, the deadline for posting the forum. Um, I usually like it if we make this immediate, because there are some of the concepts you have learned here, or there are some things that are still fresh. Um, but yes, I can give you up to the evening. Uh, I'll put that up to the evening. 
so that you can get time to post. Uh, the, what is the connection between data analysis and data cubes? So data cubes is whereby, data cubes are more like data clusters actually. Yeah, they are more like data clusters. So, um, so what we mean by data or, or, or data analysis, we can analyze data cubes. If that is um, uh, how I can be able to differentiate the two, because data cubes are like clusters within data and data analysis is done or derived from data clusters. So we can cluster the data and then analyze those clusters of data to draw conclusions from that. How can we counter how can we counter data mining issues? Um, I'm not sure if I'm getting your question quite well. Um, I'm not sure if I got that question, Anthony. I saw you, I, I can see your typing, uh, but, but just try to clarify. About the cut, uh, it's not yet open. I am actually, I may actually pull it down because the cut was offered through a different platform, but uh, linked to this platform. Uh, but I want the cut that you're going to do to be um, to be squared on, uh, you know, offered through this platform. So maybe an MCQ questions, but offered entirely from this platform not a link from a different platform so i may be pulling that down or um i may opt that to be an assignment at some point of learning here so don't worry about that and when the cut is ready i'll make sure that i will communicate appropriately of course it's there in the course outline week six so you would expect in the next three weeks um the the car to be ready and next week we'll have our assignment one okay so i'm um, trying to tie this so how can we counter data mining issues what just happened hello Uh, my apologies, um, I don't know why I left. I just found myself out. Um, apologies for that. But I'm here, I'm back here. Uh, what I was saying, I was just trying to answer the question of Anthony. And uh, Anthony was asking, how can we deal with the problems that arise from data mining? Okay. Um, Anthony, that is the same question I'm asking you in the discussion forum that we have just created. So I will not answer. <laughs> uh, please discuss with your colleagues, with your classmates, and deduce answers. There are so many answers we can have to that question. The, the issues, the challenges of data anomalies, the challenges of outliers, the challenges of security, the challenges around visualization of data. There are so many answers around that, and I cannot have an absolute answer as far as that is concerned. Um, <laughs> Winnie, you are asking, is late a, a submission of assignment allowed? <laughs> Please try it at your own risk. <laughs> So, 
why would you ask that in the first place? Are you intentionally planning to be late for assignment? Uh, I am not sure, but um, those who are here for the first class, I said there is something I call late submission rule in my classes, which says 10% of a day with a grace period of one week. When you are late for assignment submission, I'll give you one week grace period. After one week grace period, I'll start deducting 10% from your performance each day that passes. So yeah, you can try, you can try. And we'll see how the repercussions look like. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so in case you didn't get me right, I think uh, uh, what I'm saying is submit your assignments promptly on time, yeah? Because if they are not submitted, um, yeah, you have the consequences. And that's what also Hassan is trying to clarify. Just be prompt in submission of assignment. Otherwise, you may wonder where the grade went at the end of the semester. <laughs> and you may be shocked that I deducted the assignment marks were over. So I started getting my marks from other sources. Any other assignment you did um, just to recover my marks. So submit on time, please. <laughs> yeah. And, and I will not follow someone. Uh, so far, I haven't given any assignment. I'm saying I'll start that. Okay, let me not say I haven't given. There are discussion forums I have given. Uh, those discussion forums form part of our assignments. So it's part of what you're supposed to engage in. But uh, a formal assignment will come by next week. Um, yes, and I will be... So if, if you have not participated in discussion forums, please go back there and engage. Engage and uh, um, be able to, to put your comments in there. Yeah, yes, I agree with you, Job. Just to avoid mysterious great disappearance, uh, submit in time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that it's... <laughs> You're not coming after me asking what happened. Um, any other question? If if you don't have question, feel free. You can go to the discussion forum. Um, I may need to take attendance, by the way. Um, now, you people, you are so many. Um, and I'm wondering how to know who is not here, as opposed to who is here. Please do this. Uh, we are 61 of us. Let me know, is there any other question? If there isn't, I will request us to transition. Uh, uh, Jacob, is that my question? Yes, I am working from home. I'm in my house right now. Um, I don't know what you need <laughs> or why you're, you're asking. <laughs> Um, Hassan, I can't do that. I can't mark all present because we are 103 and only 66 on maximum who attended here. So I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, any any other any other question? Any other question before other than now the the other things? Anyone with a burning question? Please, you can unmute yourself and ask before I give guideline, guidance on how I'm going to take my attendance. Um,
So let me take my attendance in a very simple way. Go to the discussion forum and post your comment. And as you post, I'll be picking the name of those who are posting and ticking my attendance as we continue. So I'm seeing we are 67. How comes when I talk about attendance, the numbers are rising? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so go to the discussion forum. Let me type here. Uh, go to the discussion forum and post your, your comment. <clears throat> I will pick attendance from there. You guys, you start showing up when attendance is mentioned. If if <laughs> if you have a good friend who you are uh, giving a hands up that we have just started picking attendance, um, please, that is not a good friend. <laughs> anyway, just go to the discussion forum, post your comment and as you post i will be picking <clears throat> attendance from there so i may be ending forum uh in a short while but anyway i can even leave it here and open a new tab for attendance as you post i will be picking your names and ticking you present thank you for your time guys um this is very very refreshing I feel like learning should be just like this. I'm really enjoying uh, teaching this time than any other time before. Um, I don't know why, but that's where I am. You are not alone. We are here. Oh, yeah, I'm not alone. <laughs> Who is that? Kiprop, is that you? <laughs> I am really, really enjoying this. Um, yeah, let's make it fun. Uh, it's also helping us to release a lot of pressure that is coming with this season. So thank you guys. I have had a nice time with you guys. And um, let's do what we need to do to learn and not to be taught, but to learn in this season. I mean, in this semester. So Santeni Sanga, let me go to the attendance now. I will not focus on whatever is happening in the chat box. Stay safe and sanitize. Yes, uh, you too, you too, be safe wherever you are.
So I am taking attendance. I can see Hivano, Hassan, Michael, Chumba, Cornelius, Stacy, Kimanti, Muriki, Alex, Boaz, Ali, Brock, Kevin. I can see your posts, all those that I mentioned, I'm seeing your posts, so just keep them coming. Um, and I am taking your attendance. Martin there, who is this Anthony Kadare? Anthony Kadare. Yeah, if yeah, I can see Kipsan. I can see if you responded to my, you replied to my post. No problem. I will pick that as well. Um, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, clarity. <laughs> 